It's still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We head straight to our second conversation quickly. Uh, insecurity and the need to bear arms. A former Defence Minister General T.Y. Danjama have again implored citizens to bear arms in self-defence, asking them to find out how bandits and terrorists are attacking, are attacking them and also acquire their own arms. Now, in 2018, General T.Y. Danjama made a similar call asking Nigerians to take arms and defend themselves since their safety is not guaranteed by Buhari's administration. Speaking at a recent event, he said when, and I quote, when I said the military was colluding with armed bandits in 2017, the Minister of Defense made a kangaroo commission of inquiry that mischievously submitted that there was no evidence about my claim. And they asked me to come and defend it. I thank God today, all the evidence are very clear to all Nigerians. All Nigerian communities are now being sacked by the same bandits and alleged that all these bandits are uh, also connected, you know, with some military personnel. Meanwhile, uh, there are several governors and persons who have asked for citizens to bear arms. We're talking about self-defense as a way to tackle insecurity. Uh, Governor Belo Matawali of Zamfara State has joined some of his colleagues who have been encouraging their subject to leverage Section 33 of the 1999 Constitution to defend themselves against violent non-state actors. Governor Aminu Masari is also amongst them. Uh, Governor of Benway State Samuel Otom, amongst others. We have Dixon Osaji, who is a global security analyst. Dixon, it's good to have you join us this morning. I'd like to share your thoughts as a way of tackling insecurity in the country. Do you think that there's need for us to bear arms? Is that the way out? Well, a lot of uh, people have come up with the decision to uh, bear arms. Uh, like what T.Y. Danjima said, he's only saying that on the point of uh, honesty, uh, because he believes that uh, the security agents and uh, the government are uh, disappointed in the area of uh, protection of human lives. And uh, nobody will want to wait for the government all right, and uh, well, so uh, the crux of the conversation for us this morning is the need to bear arms as a way to tackle the insecurity. And I know that T.Y. Danjama, as much as this might be his second time of making this uh, uh, thought or asking that citizens actually bear arms, he's not the only one on this table. Like we have mentioned, there are lots of persons who are of the opinion that Nigerians and those who live in this uh, areas where a lot of crime and insecurity, especially attacks from terrorists and bandits, should bear arms. But uh, the, the question that's been posed or put out is, if this is uh, the way out, I mean, bearing arms, would it be a solution? Not also forgetting the fact that the police has also come out to say there's a ban on, you know, carrying arms. That has also, ha that continues to stay. And uh, it, it, it's something that's quite worrisome. Do we think that we're ready as a society to have everyone bearing arms? What becomes of us as a people? I would take a, a typical example uh, with Nigerians just driving. Look at how we drive, especially in Lagos. Look at how impatient we can be with one another on the road. And just imagine that everyone has to bear arms. It, it might just become a chaotic situation. Uh, if we look at developed climes, um, there's a call for gun control and now for developing countries as Nigeria, uh, we also have on the other part asking a call for uh, arms to be bet. Kofi, what are your thoughts on this really? Well, um, I mean, you know, these, these calls are growing and increasing, like you rightly said, mercy with them. Some state governors also calling, you know, their citizens to arm themselves. Um, you talked about uh, Matawali. Or Zamfara State, you know, those the same Matawali who um, single-handedly shut down four media houses in the state for covering <laughs> for covering the opposition uh, campaigns in the state. So you know, um, it's he who comes to uh, equity must come with clean hands. But that's that's beside that's by the way. It, it, it shows it shows the as a rising a tide of insecurity in the country and that the government has failed. Um, and it's responsibility to protect life and property. And, and I mean, people can't keep dying in silence. And you know what they say, nature abhors vacuum. And if uh, government does not step in to nip insecurity in the bud, 
people will, will move on their own to defend themselves. It will happen naturally. We're seeing that despite the absence of um, state policing in Nigeria's constitution, different states in the country and uh, uh, so-called geopolitical zones are uh, creating, have created their own security apparatus. In the southwest, you have Omoteku. In the southeast, you have um, Ibuwago. You know, in, in some other states, you have different. For instance, in Benin State, they have this. Uh, it's because nature abhors vacuum, and uh, you have uh, as a security vacuum created, you know, by the government not doing its, its job to protect people, and people can't remain and die in silence. So it will happen. It will happen. If nothing is done to ensure Nigerians, you know, feel safe and secure, we would see a gradual, and mercy, it's already happening. People are buying tasers. People are buying you know, all sorts of weapons. Do you have one? I don't have one. Mm. Yes. And, I mean, it's, it's not your business. If I do, <laughs> stop asking me that question. You know, hey, please. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't have one. Um, um, you know, but uh, you, you, you increasingly hear, no, no, hear no. you hear here and there people talking about these things. You, you, you know we're talking about yeah. license uh, guns now, but let's not forget, if you talk, these are guns, but if, you, if also, people, you can also take yeah. out, if you're saying that people should bear arms, and if you look at the uh, definition of all of that, you also know that there are other weapons, as much as they're not created for that particular purpose, but can also achieve the same purpose. We're talking about the machetes. You have all the weapons that yes, you know, but but but, but I think I think I mean to to own you know things like maybe stun guns and tasers. You need some. I think I'm kind of not license. sure. You need some kind of like. But but people are. Let's let's, let's not be. Uh, let's let's not you know. Let's stay on equivocally here. Uh, that that the country is heavily weaponized. The country is heavily weaponized. I know some time ago. I think this year we talked about uh, weapons, a uh, small arms proliferation in Nigeria. Even we shouldn't be talking about small arms. Heavy weapon prolifer proliferation is also there. Do you know how many weapons are scattered all around, you know, Lagos State? Do you know how many weapons are scattered all around River State? Do you know how many weapons are scattered around Abuja? People have these things around. There are weapons everywhere. And <laughs> and people feel that they need to keep these things around for any if there's any fight, any day they know they have something to hold on to. They're weapons. So I, I I think I think what is what it is is that we do not know the extent of how serious the situation is. Like I said, if people don't feel safe, even without a license, without official uh, sanction, they will go ahead and get something to protect themselves. I listened to a gentleman, an NGO, uh, uh, and, and a CSO you know, participant, and we have to go, who said he went for a conference somewhere in Abuja, and there was a weapons uh, uh, um, uh, contractor who called him to a room on the guise of discussing you know, civil society activities, and now opened and said, see, I sell guns, so, would you like to buy some? But, but Kofi, ju ju just so before... So, there's an available supply. We understand. It might also be and a little... You know the law of supply. You know the law of supply, supply and demand. demand. But, yeah. Kofi, if you, if you look at it in a strata conversation, it might be within an elitist kind of gathering. How many persons would have access? If you talk about the fact that, yes, there are weapons. And some of these weapons have fallen in the hands of uh, very... Some people say criminally minded persons who have used this to mastermind a lot of evil. But my concern yeah. in all of this is that I, I look at the number of persons who are asking that people should bear arms. Mostly you have governors, Matawale, Mas, uh, you also have uh, Tamwala Tom, um, what have you, stakeholders, a lot of them. My question is, should these governors be asking for people to bear arms? Or should these governors be concerned with the issue of uh, resources, resource control, because it would go hand in hand. So, so sort with of, the issue of restructuring. Yes, restructuring. Yeah. So yeah. rather than ask yeah, that, 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 you know, very, people that's bear a very arms, good point. we rather that's ask, very good point. you know, for uh, a restructured kind of. Well, uh, well know, if, they, if they can't get it, what do they do? Mercy, you need to know the number of young people. It's an interest. You need to know the number of young people in this country who have guns. All right, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We have to go. But please do ensure to follow us on our. Uh, social media platforms so on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Plus TV Africa, on YouTube as well at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo. Thanks for joining us. And my name is Kofi Bartels. We return tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs>